So most of linear algebra is about solving systems of equations. So how does that relate to the inverse? We'll consider a general system. In this case, I do three variables and three equations. And we can rewrite this into what's called a matrix equation, where we have our coefficient matrix. We have a vector containing the variables, and this is equal to the constants. We call this AX equal to B. So if A is invertible, then I can multiply both sides by the inverse and get that X is equal to A inverse of B. So if A is invertible, not only does the solution exist, but it's unique. So this is a great thing. It may not seem that impressive because it takes a lot of work to get the inverse. Why wouldn't you just row reduce? Well, the truth is there's a lot of applications where you want to solve a bunch of systems of equations that all have the same coefficient matrix. So I can do one row reduction and get this inverse and then just multiply by a bunch of matrices rather than row reducing several times. And finally, I'm going to start with giving the first part of the invertible matrix theorem. As we continue, this thing will grow and have more add-ons to it. So if A is a square n by n matrix, the following statements are equivalent. So this means either every single one of these are true or every single one of them are false, depending on the matrix you're talking about. The first one, A is an invertible matrix. Two, A is row equivalent to the identity. So if it's invertible, we found the inverse by row reducing to the identity. So it has to be row equivalent. A has N pivot positions. Well, the identity matrix does have a pivot in every single column, and there are N columns. So we'll have N pivots. The equation AX equal to zero has only the trivial solution. If this is row equivalent to the identity matrix, then there's no free variables. So there has to be only one solution, the trivial solution. The equation AX equal to B has at least one solution for every vector B. So basically four and five combined tell me that the solution exists and it's unique. Four tells me that if the solution exists, it's unique and five tells me it has to exist. Six, there's an n by n matrix C such that CA is equal to the identity. And seven, an n by n matrix D such that AD is equal to the identity. So separating both of these basically tells me that whenever I wanna see if something is an inverse, I only have to check one direction of matrix multiplication. The other one kinda of just comes along for free. And finally, A transpose is also going to be invertible. Like I said, this is a very long theorem. All in all, I think I'll have about 20 parts when I'm done. So this is just the first part of it. 